Welcome to the Ringside Review. This is your boy Bruce Lee. And I just wanted to come to you and recap a few of the fights that happened this past weekend and give my few predictions on the fights that's coming up this weekend. Uh, but first off, I want to say, get your hands up. Get them up. Get them up and give it up. This is a stick up. Uh, that's what happened to Lara yesterday uh, versus Paul Williams. He got robbed of a decision victory versus P. Will, which P. Will won. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know what the fight, what fight the judges were watching. Uh, maybe they were playing with their phones at the time of the fight, texting, twittering, whatever. Uh, obviously, they weren't watching the fight, but anyway, they gave the decision, majority decision to P. Will. Uh, Lara got robbed, another robbery. This is uh, what about the third or fourth robbery that happened within the last uh, two, two to three weeks. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, mark this down as another robbery. Somebody else got stuck up. Uh, but anyway, P. Will won uh, on the majority decision on yesterday. Also, Rios retained his WB, uh, WBA title uh, by knockout in knockout fashion. Uh, gave a right hand to his opponent, Antil um, uh, Antil Antilio. How do you pronounce his name? He gave a right hand to that big guy and Hey, to the face, and that was it. That that was that was a pretty much a done deal right there. But he retains his WBA title, and he he wants to enter his name in the he has thrown his name out there in the Pacquiao sweepstakes. Uh, but in my opinion, next up for him would be Juan Manuel Marquez. Of course, after he fights Pacquiao coming up later this year. Uh, that would be my next step for him, but of course, I'm not him, you know, him or his team. Uh, but I think that's the route he should go, is uh, Marquez, uh, before he decides to step up to Pacquiao. Uh, if he, you know, he's just one of the many, many people that want to get at Pacquiao. So, he has entered his name into the Pacquiao sweepstakes, but personally, he should go after Marquez next, after uh, Pacquiao and Marquez have their, their third bout coming up here later this year. Also, uh, Butte with a, a victory, a knockout victory versus Gene Paul Mendy. I thought it would go a little bit longer than this, but I should have known better uh, according to Mendy's last fight. But uh, anyway, Butte takes that uh, by knockout. He, he took that by knockout. Let me, let me correct myself. He took that by knockout on yesterday. Also, we have Molina. Molina uh, beating Centron. He, uh, Molina started off losing the fight, you know, the first first uh, rounds he was losing, but he came back. So uh, I'm thinking this fight with Lara back in March wasn't a fluke like I thought it was. Personally, I thought it was a fluke. But the guy showed, you know, he had some heart and came back and beat, um, at a score, according to the ring, he beat the number two ranked opponent, according to Ring Magazine in the junior middleweight division. So big ups to uh, Carlos Molina for that big victory. Uh, also want to uh, give my first prediction on the fight coming up in the cruiserweight division: Marco Huck, Huck versus Hugo Garay. This is for Huck's WBO cruiserweight championship. Marco Huck is ranked number two according to Ring Magazine. He is five and zero in his last five fights with two knockouts. With his last and only loss coming to uh, Steve Cunningham back in 2007. On the other hand, you have DeRay in his last five. He's three and two with one knockout. And his last loss was just uh, last year. Uh, so basically, uh, what I have in this fight, I have Marco Hood by winning by a knockout late in the rounds, late in the fight, I should say. I'm going with Huck with a late, late fight knockout on uh, DeRay. Uh, the next fight I want to uh, give a quick prediction on is Ricky Burns versus Nicky Cook. And this is for Ricky Burns WBO Junior Lightweight Championship, uh, which will be on the line in this fight. Uh, let me go down here to the last five for these fellas. Uh, Burns, in his last five, he's 5-0 uh, and o with no knockouts. Uh, we have Cook, 3-2. <laughs> Similar to the fight I just predicted, but uh, three and two with one knockout, and his last loss was coming back in 09. Uh, for this fight, I'm going with the champion also. I'm going with Burns by unanimous decision. 
uh, in their junior lightweight championship bout. And I just wanted to back up, uh, give a little little side note here for uh, Hugo Garay. He is ranked number 15 by the WBO uh, in the cruiserweight division. And for Nikki Cook in the junior lightweight division, he is ranked number 11. Uh, so they're, they're taking on below top 10 opponents in their weight divisions. Uh, pretty much blow off fights in my opinion, you know, to get, get sharp enough for something else. So I have uh, Huck by late fight KO and Barnes by a unanimous decision. Uh, some side notes to kind of wrap this up. Uh, we have Devin Alexander. He wants to move up to 147 from 140. I don't think that's a, a, a good idea, uh, Alexander. You, you barely, barely held on at 140. You know, well, I should say barely. Well, you got head butted and lost the fight. But anyway, uh, at 147, I see you getting knocked out by the top opponents in the welterweight division. Uh, we're not talking about feather, feather fisted friends in the welterweight division. Most of those guys pack some pop and will knock you out. So I don't know what you, I know it's hard to make the 140 weight, uh, that according to your manager, but um, I, don't see, I don't see it happening. You will not be a top 147 fighter, in my opinion. Uh, you will be at the bottom of the pack. Just like he was discussing fighting uh, with Pauly Mag Magalini. Uh, he, them two were talking back and forth, and that's the only person I see him really getting, getting at, at 147 without getting knocked out. That'll be just a, a boxing clinic, I mean, which is not bad. I mean, it's, it is boxing. It don't get hit, but what I'm saying, neither one of them are uh, going to get knocked out. So uh, that fight will go to, to a decision if they were to make it. Um, but, yeah, Alexander, just stop it. Cut it. Cut it out. I, I don't see it happening. Just try to, well, you can't. You said you can't make the 140 weight, but, well, good luck to you, my friend, because you will need it at 147. Another side note, we have uh, Cotto, Miguel Cotto, uh, against uh, Margarito, December 3rd, uh, later on this year. Uh, Cotto lost to Margarito uh, some years ago. I feel it was from, from Margarito's hands being plastered. But I think Cotto will get revenge coming up in December and go ahead and defend his version of the junior, junior middleweight championship. Also, you have Berto coming back to the ring versus Zadik on September 3rd. So he will, uh, he will be back to see what he can do after his knockout loss to Victor. This is Victor Ortiz uh, in his loss in the WBC championship fight, uh, which Berto claimed uh, Victor was on some kind of performance and some drugs. But that's another one, Berto. Just like Mr. Hay, take your loss like a man. You know, you made your next fight. So go ahead and fight and, and keep your mouth shut. You just got beat. But uh, as a side note, Berto steps back into the ring. And before I get out of here, I just wanted to give you the WBO's, uh, rank, WBO rankings for the cruiserweights. Uh, number one, we have Will Tomlinson from Austria. Number two, Lewis Cruz from Puerto Rico. Number three, Elroy, Elroy Perez from the U.S. Number four, Tardizak Jack Dean. What the heck is that? Anyway, the guys from Thailand, rank number four, cruiserweight by the WBO. And number five, Vicente M. Rodriguez from Argentina. That's the top five of the WBO's uh, version. <coughs> Dang it. Correction. Wrong division, wrong division, wrong side of the paper, my bad. My bad on that one. What I just gave you was a junior lightweight division, according to the WBO. So my mistake, before you leave any comments or say this guy is sick and doesn't know what he's talking about, <laughs> my bad. That was in the junior lightweight division. Now I will give you the cruiserweight division, uh, according to the WBO, since those are two title fights coming up. I should say two of the two title fights coming up. There are many more. I'm sorry, I can't get to all of them, but there are many more out there. Uh, but these are two I want to touch on. But anyway, for the Cruiserweights WBO rankings, we have uh, that. Oh, golly. Davis is a Lebedev from Russia. 
Uh, number two, we have Oli Ophelambi from the UK. I know I butchered that name, but for, please forgive me. My UK fans out there, please forgive me for that and correct me. Feel free to correct me because I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name. Uh, number three, in the Cruiserweight division, we have Latif Coyote from Nigeria. Number four, Nuri Safari, Safari, my bad, from Albania. And number five, we have Alexander Frankel from uh, Ukraine. That wraps up the top five for the WBO's Cruiserweight uh, division. Uh, but that's all I have for you today. Uh, but I, I want to, well, I take that back. I want to try something new. Something that, that was suggested to me uh, for this week. Uh, you know, I, I will answer any questions. Uh, please submit questions to me. Of course, regarding the sport of boxing, of course. But uh, see any questions you have, and I will answer them on my next show. Uh, any questions you may have, just 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 shoot me an email, or you know, write post a comment on my my channel page. Uh, let me know your question. I will answer it live on next show. Uh, something new I want to try. It was suggested to me a few months back. But uh, leave a question for me. Whatever you want to uh, ask me regarding boxing, uh, let me know, and uh, I'll answer your questions uh, next week. Until next time, peace out. And have a good one.